Hello everyone, in today's video we will be looking into aperture, what that means, how that affects your exposure, how that affects your camera settings when you are taking pictures and probably you have heard the term called depth of field, how that relates to your aperture. Aperture plays a vital role when you are taking a picture as that is one of the main functions of your lens. So let's look into that today. So when we talk about aperture, it is very important to understand that aperture is a function of lens first of all and not the camera. Uh, what that means is basically it is an opening, a small opening in the lens that allows the light to go when you are trying to expose a picture. Aperture is defined as a f number. So if you have heard terms like f2.8 or f22, these are the aperture values. Now what happens is the bigger the value of your aperture, the smaller is the opening. Meaning, as you go towards f22, f30, that opening is really small in the lens. But when you move towards f2.8 or f3.5, uh, which is the minimum, typical minimum values for the lens, then that means that your lens is wide open and it will allow more light. So it is very important to understand it that way. And I know sometimes it can get confusing. So the e easy way of remembering the aperture is looking at the depth of field or trying to remember it with the depth of field. So depth of field typically defines what part of your picture is in focus or is sharp. If you have heard the term shallow depth of field, that means less things are in focus. Only one object or, or one person would be in focus and rest all would be out of focus. Versus once you go to a higher depth of field, uh, then you'll have more things in focus. The best way of understanding it is let's look at this uh, portrait picture. Now in this portrait picture, you can see only the person is in focus, but then everything around it, the background, including the background is all blur. Now this is shallow depth of field. Now on the other hand, if you look at this landscape picture, now everything in this landscape picture is in focus, is sharp, starting from the foreground to the background. That is because this has a higher depth of field. Now how do you relate the depth of field to aperture? So when your aperture value is less, your depth of field is less and it's shallow. But when your aperture value is higher, then your depth of field is higher. And, and most of the things will be sharp. So if you try to remember it that way, so it will be very easy for you to understand how aperture works. Now let's say if I'm taking a portrait picture. So I want a shallow depth of field, meaning I'll keep a F value of F3.5 or 2.8. So less F value is less depth of field. So F2.8, F3.5 will give me enough sharpness on the subject itself uh, which which I want, but then it, it will automatically make everything else blur. On the other hand, if I'm looking for something to be sharp throughout the picture, including my foreground, my background, everything, uh, then definitely I'll be going more towards F22 or if I can get higher value, uh, I'll be going towards that. So in that way, everything will be in focus, it will be sharp. You will see these kind of settings mainly when you are taking landscape pictures outside where you are outdoors and trying to take everything, uh, trying to focus on everything. There can be few exceptions to it. For example, when you are trying to do night shoots where you want most of the light coming because you are trying to take either star trails or you are trying to shoot the Milky Way. In that scenario, you still want your f-stop to be as less as possible because you want the opening to be as bigger as possible and, and you want more light to come in. So those are some of the scenarios where you always have exception. In order to understand the aperture even further, let's take a picture here. So what we will do is start from f2.8 and then go towards f22 because that's what my camera takes f2.8 to f22 and see what the difference is. In general, f-stops can go from somewhere from f1.2, 1.4 to f40, f35, f40. f Obviously, you won't get the whole range in one single lens, but there are lenses that can that have those capabilities to, to do that kind of f-stop too. Uh, as I said, my lens, uh, the one I'm using right now is f2.8 to f22. So that's what that's the range we will use right now for this this picture. And by the way, if you have not subscribed to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Also hit the bell icon so that you get the notifications. There are more videos coming, so definitely don't miss out on that. Again, going back to the aperture here, let's start from with f2.8. So here is a picture taken at f2.8. You can see the front guy is in, in focus, but then everything around it or even the background uh, is, is all blurred. You can hardly see those guys standing behind. So what we will do now is move towards f10 
and see what happens so as you can see now this, the front guy is still in focus but then the background is slightly less blurred than the one we took before at f2.8 now let's take it further uh, to f16 and see what happens again you can see that the guys at the back are getting more clear so every time we go a higher f stop they'll they'll get more sharper and get more clear and won't be blurred as compared to your previous pictures taken at f2.8 now let's go to the extreme f22 and see what happens now you can see that the front guy is still clear and he's sharp you can see that even the back guys are pretty clear and they are not blur anymore so that's the difference that you see when you when you go from f2.8 to f22 understanding this will help you just to understand where to use what f-stop uh, for your for your applications so if it's an event portrait shoots or family shoots uh, for example i tend to go towards more towards f2.8 uh, and depending how big the crowd is i sometimes try to land up between f4.5 to f5 uh, because I don't want just one guy in focus. I want the whole group to be in focus But I still want to blur the background, but again if I'm taking landscape pictures I'm outside. I try to set my camera more towards f16 to f22 Depending on what I'm trying to shoot as you are exposing the pictures and as you are changing the aperture Your shutter speed and your ISO which are the two other elements of your exposure triangle will change accordingly It is very important. I would say that you understand exposure triangle uh, before you get into aperture and all these details Details. and I, I have a separate video for that I'll link it here somewhere uh, on the video so that you can go after this and and watch that so hopefully that clears a lot of your doubts on aperture and 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 hopefully you learn something out of this video make sure you comment and let me know also if you have other video ideas that you think I should be making videos on please let me know and I'll try to make a video on that also I have a link to my blog and my Instagram page in the in the description so make sure you follow me if you like my content have a great day and keep clicking. Thank